good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to race number six of season eight of the NHRA Race Snickers Cup Series. We are here to finish out our race weekend at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. Had ourselves one really interesting Mobile and Cup Series race yesterday in which we had for the very first time a race un and under a phantom Caution. Weird, strange happenings going on here at Fontana. We're going to have to see if maybe something strange is going to happen here today in the Snickers Cup Series race. We certainly hope not, but then again, it's the NSRA. Anything can happen. Let's get to the field. Harrison Langford sits on the pole position as uh, he has ended up coming off two back-to-back second-place finishes at Las Vegas and Atlanta. Didn't run quite as well last week at Coca-Cola Speedway. Got involved in an incident, ended up spinning on the front straightaway. I believe he still ended up finishing the race, but didn't exactly finish well. And I got a phone call. Just one sec. Sorry about that. Had my parents calling me. Anyway, uh, where was I? Yes, I was. Talk about Harrison Langford. Um, didn't run quite as well last week at Coca-Cola, but he still comes in second in the point standings regardless. He is only a total of, as I'm looking at it right now, he is 15 points back from the points leader, Trent Dunham. So Langford starting on the pole position today, still trying to look for that first win. That's what's eluding him right now because, remember, wins are what gets you into the chase for the championship, and Harrison Langford wants to be one of those 16 that get into this season's chase. Alongside of him, a driver that already has won this season. However, it's going to get interesting when we get close to the uh, end of the regular season to see if maybe only the one-time winners, if they're going to get into the top 10 in or into the uh, into the chase, Levi McIntyre alongside of him. Now, McIntyre actually comes in running well in points, though. McIntyre is currently running in the uh, fifth position in points. So, right now, as long as McIntyre can run up there inside the top ten in points with that one win, he does have a chance of making the chase for the championship. As it looks like row three is going to comprise of Cole Daly, I believe. No, that's not Cole Daly. That's William Duncan in the uh, Ratchet and Clank Ford out of Young Motorsports. Duncan having a great season right now, but again, just like Harrison Langford, looking for that win this season. He's fourth in points. Alongside of him is Isaac Kanepa. Kanepa off to a rocky start here in his rookie season, 36th in the current points. And it looks like rounding out the top five, I can't tell if that is Dylan Poteet or if that is Jacob Lawler. And it is indeed Dylan Poteet in the 31 in the Great Clips paint scheme this week, and Poti comes into this race currently dead last in the points. As we're going to get these uh, cars rolling off, and they're going to complete a pace lap, and while they do that, we'll show you your starting grid on the top of your screen. The rest of the point standings coming into this race are as follows. Trent Dunham, as we said, he's the points leader. Langford is second, 15 back. Last week's winner, Sean Gallagher at Coca-Cola. He's moved up to third in points now. He's totaling 20 points out. William Duncan is fourth, and Levi McIntyre starting fifth. Those are fifth in the points. Those two starting up here inside the top five. Ralph Mason is sixth in the points. Danny's Ashley LaPlante seventh. Tweenix teammates Danny Wells and Sean Henley, they are eighth and ninth. And Charles Jackson completes the top ten. Out of the drivers that come in in the top ten in points, only three have been to victory lane. Dunham, Galligan, and McIntyre. So all these drivers having good seasons so far really need wins. Trip to victory lane could mean a spot in this season's Snickers Cup Series chase for the championship. Take a look at the Fords up here. We've got three of them in the top three. And all three of them out of different stables. 43 out of Rogers VA Performance Motorsports, the 60 out of Heavy Metal Motorsports, and the 12 out of Young Duncan Motorsports. Nonetheless, though, getting ready to be put under the green flag. Wolfgang Mason went to victory lane in yesterday's Mobile Cup Series race. His brother, Ralph Mason, in this field. We'll have to see if maybe he could be an all-Mason sweep. A couple other drivers who had good runs here in the Mobile Cup Series race yesterday. Jessica Shelton, she's in this field. And also, Levi McIntyre. So keep your eyes on those drivers. Cody Lamas could also be a player in this. As here we go. Getting ready to turn them loose here at Auto Club for 38 laps of racing. Green flag is out, and we are underway here at Auto Club in the Auto Club 400. Immediately, Isaac Canepa jumping up to that high side. We saw in the Mobile Cup Series race where the outside line does get a lot of momentum. Coming out of turns two and four is, oh, look out, Kai, oh, there goes the pole center, and there goes Levi McIntyre, Brady Gonzalez is caught up in it, Canepa's caught up in it, and they're still wrecking. McCurry's been collected up on his roof is McIntyre. And I think there were more drivers involved than we initially saw. Oh, this is trouble back here, too. Oh, look out. Sanford goes on the apron. Hangs on to her, though. Nicely done. 
as they come out of the final corner here they're coming down to the caution I believe the leader may be Dylan Poteet nope it's William Duncan after mayhem up at the very front of the field involving Harrison Langford second in points Levi McIntyre fifth in the point stands as well as Brandon Gonzalez Anthony McCrory and the rookie Isaac Canepa big trouble right up there at the front of the field they went four wide for the lead that wasn't going to end pretty and it certainly didn't as William Duncan is the leader we saw in the Mobile Cup Series race driver short pit as early as lap two let's see if these drivers come to pit road yes they are so let's follow these pit stops before we go back and see what happened Canepa on pit road McIntyre Langford there is McCrory and there is Brandon Gonzalez the both of them Continuing, but they're no doubt going to have to come to pit road to repair the damage they received. Gonzalez is 23rd in points, McCurry 20th in the standings. As the top five come to pit road with everybody else behind them Duncan, Poteet, Hart, Sullivan, and Danny Wells. And let's jump to our uh, pit lane one camera as soon as William Duncan pulls into his pit stall. And we'll see what the strategy is going to be here. Now we saw drivers be able to go the full 25 laps of our Mobile Cup Series event. Here pitting now, we know these drivers would at least be able to make it to lap 28. As Duncan pulls into his pit stall, there you see the damaged car of Lankford, the damaged car of McIntyre. Gas and go for these guys. Drag race off pit road between Duncan and Poteet. I honestly don't know who won between those two. Everybody else completing their service, leaving pit row. Makoto Iguchi had a rather slow pit stop, lost a number of spots on pit road. Bob Jones, Jacob Lawler now leaving. Citadino, Megan Atkins, Samper, Shelton, Qualls, Seth Cole, and Sean Galligan. Last week's winner going to start way at the rear of the field. And Coming off pit road now, that is Brandon Gonzalez. I don't see McCurry. There he is. He's now coming off pit road as well. So it looks like the 23 and 61 were able to repair their cars. They'll return to the track. But the 60 of Lankford, the 43 of our pole sitter, Harrison Lankford, Levi McIntyre, and Isaac Canepa, I don't think they'll be able to continue. Let's see what happened. Put us under the caution for the first time here today at Auto Club. And here's a look at what happened. William Duncan made it four wide heading here into the first corner. And Duncan gave plenty of room here. Langford kind of ran up the track. Then McIntyre runs up the track. And watch right here. Okay, I wasn't sure if Poteet maybe hooked Langford, uh, hooked uh, McIntyre into Langford, or if Langford just got hooked by the 60. Apparently, it was McIntyre who got into the right rear of the Bugles Ford. There you see the contact for Brandon Gonzalez. Look it up in the catch fence. Up on top of the 43 was Levi McIntyre. And up ahead, somebody else ended up sliding. I think that might have actually been McCrory. Let's see. Yeah, it was. Now, this must have been a follow-up incident. Yeah, they were trying to all get by. Contact right there between Norman and Gonzalez sends Gonzalez up into Canepa. And then either McCrory hooks into Michael Norman or Ian Dutta gets into the 61's left rear. And McCrory tries to lock up the brakes as best he can to avoid going up into the wall. And he's not able to do it. Gets it with both the right rear and right front. And there you see Brandon Gonzalez up into the wall as well. He's going to get around on the high side. Everybody else does a great job getting past here. We could have had a lot more drivers involved with drivers pulling as far down as they did to avoid this wreck. And there is Langford on his roof, upside down. Driver had to be evacuated out of that car and everything because it did not flip back onto all four wheels. Man. Talk about hits on track, but also hits in the points. That was Harrison Langford, the pole sitter. Levi McIntyre, the outside pole sitter. And those two came in top five in the standings. So Auto Club picking its victims very carefully here today, it seems. A lot of drivers may have to watch out here if they come in running good in the point stands. Let's head back now for our first restart of the day. We've gotten the signal of one to go. We'll go back to green on lap six of 38. William Duncan did indeed bet, beat Pit, uh, did beat Poteet. <laughs> Easy for me to say, off of Pit Road. So he will be the leader still. Poteet lines up in second. Noah Hart currently runs third. Tanner Sullivan in fourth. And Danny Wells completes the top five. Joshua Balkowitz is sixth. Zachary Fitzwater seventh. Sean Henley eighth. And Dougie Shears runs ninth with the top 10 completed. By Michael Norman, Kyle Corbett is in 11th, Ian Dutta 12th, Cole Daly runs 13th, 14th Jake Rogers, 15th place could be Chris Washer, 16th James McLeod, 
Trent Dunham runs in 17th, so the points leader still in this. Makoto Iguchi, our Daytona 500 winner, is 18th. Cody Lamas runs 19th, and 20th is Nathan Hudson. Let's go further back. Ashley LaPlante's 21st, 22nd, Joshua Michaels. Joshua Collard runs in 23rd. 24th, Dylan Young. 25th place will be Ralph Mason. Bob Jones, 26th. 27th place will be Jacob Lawler. Charles Jackson is in 28th. 29th place is Kyle Matthews. James Silverfox runs in 30th with John Cedino 31st. Then it's Megan Atkins, Charles Samper, Jessica Shelton, and James Qualls. That's the top 35. Seth Cole runs in 36th. Sean Galligan all the way back in 37th. Gonzalez 38th and 39th. Anthony McCurry. 40th, 41st, and 42nd are going to be the three drivers out of the race. Isaac Canepa, Levi McIntyre, and Harrison Langford. Two of those drivers ended up starting on the front row of today's event. Getting ready to go back green, though. William Duncan ready to get us back underway in that sheet metal-looking number 12. Dylan Pote going to jump up here to the high side, and now maybe with a single-file restart, we'll be able to log some green flag laps. We had a quick early caution, and look at Dylan Pote utilizing that high side that we talked about earlier, and is he going to be able to get out of two? Looking to take the lead, and he will. So Dylan Pote... Got some valuable experience in yesterday's Mobile Cup Series event, even though he didn't really finish that well, but still, he figured out that outside line's the way to go, and now Noah Hart's about to try and do the same thing. Takes away second place from William Duncan. Never thought I'd say it, but I think these drivers are fighting for a spot on the high side. Normally, when you come to a track, if you get caught on the high side, you're going to go to the back. That's not exactly the case here at Auto Club as Hart moves into second as teammate out of Kyle Tech Racing. Tanner Sullivan lines right up there in third, but now going to move to the inside of his teammate in the 81. And look at how Zachary Fitzwater got a huge run coming out of that corner. He's actually going to look to go three wide for second, heading here into three. Got a huge run, now does the crossover and cannot get to the inside of the U.S. Marines Audi. And now Noah Hart going to utilize the high side out of four. He'll take second. And now Duncan has finally been able to find himself a spot on the high side. He's going to take third place away from Tanner Sullivan. It's a scramble for the high side here at Auto Club as Dylan Poteet is waving sayonara to the rest of the field right now. As they all continue to battle for position. Well, forget about saying sayonara. It's hello, field. You're right on my back bumper again because the caution flag is out once more. It looks like this time it's involved James Qualls and James Silverfox. John Cittadino has also got some damage from this. It looks like Silverfox may be the worst for wear after this incident. Silverfox comes in 11th in the point stands. I believe he's the, actually the second highest running of the Kyotech drivers in the standings. And the Mezzo Mix Audi has been collected in something along with John Cittadino and James Qualls. Let's look back at a replay of what happened. And this was heading into turn number three. See if we can find out where the initial contact is going to begin. Watch very carefully the red and white machine of James Qualls. He's going to slide up the track. He may actually get a little help here from Seth Cole in the 52. Let's watch carefully here. Well, no, they shifted it almost to four wide. And then, oh, and then Citadino gets Qualls in the right rear. Qualls up into Silver Fox. And Silver Fox, very much just like his teammate Anthony McCurry in the first wreck, an innocent victim just collected up in it. Qualls is able to just barely save it. Then he's, he comes back up, gets the wall again. Citadino boxed in behind the 41, gets finally to the inside. And that is what put us under the caution here for the second time here today at Auto Club. Our first wreck ended up involving a number of drivers up in the top of the points. This time... The only driver that really was running well in the stands involved was James Silverfox in 11th place. Qualls running all the way down in 40th and Citadino running 29th. But tough break there for the Kyotech Audi of James Silverfox. That's what puts us under the caution for the second time today. Let's head back to green. And this is not live. This was while we were away. Drivers made pit stops. Dylan Poteet and everybody else came down pit road once again, this time for rubber. Remember the last time it was for a gas and go to top off the fuel tank? Now they're in for rubber, and I'm not certain, but they may actually be able to make it the rest of the way on one tank of fuel. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. Dylan Poteet's crew, very stellar, gets him off of pit road first. Hart came out second, then was Fitzwater, Tanner Sullivan, and Danny Wells. Let's head back now to live action. So as we get ready to go back to green, this time I'll be on lap 12 of 38. 
believe that'll give us a total of 27 laps remaining here today at Auto Club. Dylan Poteet is the leader. Noah Hart in second. Tanner Sullivan's third. Zachary Fitzwater fourth. Danny Wells fifth. Then it's Balkowitz in sixth. Shears in seventh. Norman eighth. Ninth Kyle Corbett and James McLeod completes the top ten. William Duncan must have had a rather slow pit stop because he's all the way back here in 11th place for the restart. So as we get ready to go back to green, let's find out where a couple of our front runners and points are currently going to restart. Trent Dunham's going to roll off from 20th place. Sean Galligan is going to restart in 33rd. We talked about William Duncan. And Harrison Langford, Levi McIntyre, second and fifth in points, are out of the race. And they've actually been joined now by James Silverfox, who has taken his car behind the walls. We're back green. So two cautions, taking out three drivers. And we are just about, well, not quite a third of the way into today's event. Poteet and Hart, they get away quickly, but there's a battle going on for third between some rookies. Tanner Sullivan on the high side, Zachary Fitzwater on the inside, and then behind them, Michael Norman fighting tooth and nail with Tweenix driver Danny Wells. As looks like Noah Hart's going to lose second place, Tanner Sullivan going to get by him on the high side, and Poteet going to keep the lead at least for now, but he's got company here. Lots of company, and look at the run Danny Wells gets, oh man, Poteet got wicked high through that corner. I don't know if he meant to do that or if he got forced up there. Whatever the case, he was really, really high and almost ended up losing that position. Oh, look at Danny Wells. Holy cow, Danny drove her in there hard and he almost slid up into Tanner Sullivan. And somehow, someway, Danny Wells made the inside line work at Auto Club. Look out for that car. That car is lightning fast today. Zachary Fitzwater now trying to take third place away from Tanner Sullivan. Not sure if he's going to be able to do it because that outside line is going to kick in. Sullivan going to get a big run out of the corner and now going to try the crossover move on Danny Wells coming down the back straightaway. What we saw with Danny Wells, apparently you can make a move happen, but you kind of got to slide your opponent off the corner, make them get a little loose and not be able to get the run off of four. And right there, Tanner Sullivan was not able to do so. To, uh, to Danny Wells. It's actually got Zachary Fitzwater coming alongside of him for third. Now let's see what Danny Wells can do with Dylan Poteet here. We know he got the inside line working one time, so he can do it again. Oh, he's trying. Not able to do it this time, but he didn't really lose touch with Poteet either. And Fitzwater was too far back to be able to utilize the high side to get to the back bumper of the Jimmy John Chevy. So now Danny Wells, I thought he might try and run in Dylan Poteet's tire tracks. No, he's going to the bottom again. And he actually may draw even this time. Is he to the left rear? Not quite. He's got to get underneath Dylan Poteet here to be able to make the move coming into one. Here he comes. He's going to try it. Zachary Fitzwater looking even lower. Oh, this is going to be interesting. And Pote gets a wicked run off of two. He will hold on to the top spot right now. Fitzwater, the guy that's going to lose out. Danny gets by him now. He'll keep second. And now he's got Tanner Sullivan and Michael Norman there as well. Noah Hart into the mix as well as Joshua Balkowitz in the 91. So now Pote a little bit of pressure taken off, at least for right now. Battle is on for second. Danny Wells has it. Tanner Sullivan wants it. Sullivan determined to get that inside line working. Let's see if he can make a move this time. Oh, look at this. Danny Wells is going to get a big run on his own teammate here coming through this corner. And Michael Norman's coming up here now. Norman's been very quietly picking up spot after spot, lap after lap. He's now up to third, and now he's looking for more. Here he comes under Danny Wells for third place. Sooner or later, I think these drivers are going to have to figure out how to get around each other via the high side for the lead. But Danny wants to use the inside. Look at the run he got out of four. He's coming to the inside of Pochi. Can he make the move? He's almost got him cleared. Did he clear him? Oh, he's got to move up. Move up, Danny. Oh, Pochi coming back on the high side. And Pochi will draw even and now will bypass Danny Wells again. But what an effort by Danny Wells there. That was a great move out of four to move a crossover move and almost take the lead coming into turn number one. 
Danny going to have to regroup, try again. Meekwild Michael Norman under fire from the Tanner Sullivan machine. Let's jump back to that battle, actually. That's a good one. Got Joshua Bulkowitz up here along with Zachary Fitzwater as well. Three rookies up here battling with a number of veterans. Fighting to be rookie of the race here are the 20, the 76, and the 91. Oh, wait a minute. Battle's on again for the lead. Danny Wells trying to get by Dylan Pote. Can he do it this time? Oh, he used the slide off the corner move. Did it work? Pote gave him room, though. And coming off of four, Poteet's going to clear him. Man, Danny is just trying so hard to get something to work. He's been so close, but not been able to do anything. And keep in mind, too, these are teammates out of Tweenix Racing that are racing each other this hard. Danny doesn't look like he's going to wreck Dylan, but you know that he's not going to go away quietly. He wants to get a win just as bad as Dylan Pote does. Remember, with the new point system we've got, a win could mean a guaranteed spot in the Snickers Cup Series chase for the championship. And Danny Wells again going to try the inside line. Not going to be able to get the run off the corner like Dylan Pote does. As a matter of fact, here comes some company. Michael Norman got the run on the high side. Now he'll draw alongside of the four machine side by side for second. Well, this is going to be a good, good battle here all the way to the start-finish line on the final lap. I can just sense it. These drivers trying to see where their cars work best, and it seems like every driver that uses the high side has been able to make up ground. Every driver that uses the low side is able to be able to mount a little bit of offense, but not enough where it counts. Michael Norman now trying the inside line. How about Cole Daly? I just saw the 88 working up here. He's now up, I believe, in the seventh position. Nice run here for the driver out of Hendrick Daly Motorsports in that 88 machine. Right now, the highest running for that team. Having an excellent run right now and really needs this run. Comes in 28th in the point standings. Dodge is doing okay right now with the driver Ian Dutta. Going three wide here with Dougie Shears and Joshua Balkowitz. Defending champ Jacob Lawler's back here as well as William Duncan who led a couple of laps today. And then further back here you got Kyle Corbett, you got James McLeod. There's Cody Lamas, Megan Atkins has actually picked up quite a few spots here today. Joshua Michaels, there's Jessica Shelton who actually started near the rear of the field. Now up inside the top 20 going by Nathan Hudson. Charles Sanford back here and... Sean Henley, I don't know if he lost spots on the racetrack or if he lost a lot of spots on pit road. Whichever the case, he's outside the top 20 right now in the Pfizer Viagra Chevy. Trent Dunham, he's currently all the way back here in 22nd, is the points leader. But keep in mind, William Duncan's the only one in the top five in points that's actually running better on the racetrack than him. Is they're going to come down to pit road? And Pote decided to stay out. So did Noah Hart. William Duncan stayed out, McLeod, Corbett, and Shears, they all stayed out. As the first of the drivers to come to pit road was Michael Norman. Danny Wells also on the pit lane, so they're going to have to pit here apparently, and this could be what we usually call the money stop. So now Dylan Pote going to slow it down here. He's going to come to pit road now, along with Noah Hart and all those other drivers who didn't pit before. Dougie Shears, Corbett, Duncan, and McLeod. They're going to have a nice clean pit road, too, I think, to be able to make their pit stops, rather than having all the mayhem that was just on pit road earlier. All but six drivers came down pit road a lap ago. Oh, look out. Some drivers leaving their pit stalls, though. That could potentially be problems. Oh, Makoto Aguchi boxed Dylan Pote down. Pote made some contact with Aguchi on pit road. That could slow up the 31's pit stop. Doesn't look like he's missing a beat, though. Exact same pit stop as the car behind him, Noah Hart, who came in just behind Pote onto pit road. Service is done. He's down and away. Cor Kyle Corbett, though, Dougie Shears and James McLeod had it looked like slightly faster pit stops. And now Pote is down and away. And we'll see if he comes out as the leader. I don't know if that may have caused some damage to his machine on the left front after that contact with Makoto Aguchi. And Pote going to come back off of pit road, and I believe he is going to cycle around still as the leader. 
No, he's not. Michael Norman just got around him. Michael Norman and Zachary Fitzwater. That was for the lead. Norman just took the lead. Fitzwater to second. Pokti comes off pit road in the third position. I don't know if he didn't get up through the gears quickly enough or what. He looked like he was going to come out ahead of Norman. Norman just got a huge run coming down the back straightaway, and he bypassed him for the lead. Yes, officially right now, Michael Norman is the leader. Zachary Fitzwater now trying to take that spot away. Not going to be able to do it. Now he loses ground. He's back in second. Pokedeet's third. Corbett now up to fourth, and Danny Wells is fifth. Where is Joshua Michaels come from, for heaven's sakes? He's up to sixth place now. Sullivan's in seventh. Eighth place, James McLeod. There's Shelton now up to ninth with Dougie Shears completing the top ten. A number of these drivers, I'm not certain where they came from, but they're up here now. Joshua Michaels, who I think started near the rear of the field, he's up in the top ten, and so is Jessica Shelton. As Michael Norman continues to lead here, pit stops apparently worked out in his favor, and I really would love to know what happened on that 31 machine. Yes, he did make contact with Makoto Aguchi on pit road, but his pit stop was exactly the same time as Noah Hart's pit stop when the both of them came into their pit stalls at the exact same time. So he didn't lose any time on pit road with the contact on pit road. It was something to do with how he got off of pit road and merged with traffic, I would think. But that could be very, very costly there for Dylan Poteet. No doubt about that. Basically dominated the first half of this race and now trying to scramble back as he's actually trying to go on the inside line underneath Zachary Fitzwater. May actually be able to get it to work here if he gets a good enough run into the corner. And oh, he tried it. I think he could do it. I think Poti could actually get second place here. Oh, Fitzwater battling back on the high side though. And Fitzwater's going to draw back even. So Dylan Poti was not able to get the inside line wound up there out of four. And here comes Joshua Michaels. Sixth place right now looking for... Actually, no, I believe he's fifth. I think he just lost fifth, actually, to Kyle Corbett. What a great run for Corbett. Didn't really talk about him yet, but, man, he's been doing a good job of keeping himself up here at the front of the field. Right now, running in the fifth position and looking for more three wide with Danny Wells and Zachary Fitzwater. Also underneath the Dylan Pote machine. Wait a minute. He just bypassed the Danny Wells machine via the low line. Someone actually got the inside line to work. He just crossed the line in third place. Nicely done there by Kyle Corbett. And nice to see him having a good run. Corbett's 22nd in the point standings. Not doing nearly as well in points as his uh, Gibbs Walter at Mayonnaise Racing teammate Charles Jackson. But having a great run right now up inside the top five. As Dylan Poteet has taken over second place right now. But he's got a lot of ground to have to make up on Michael Norman when there's going to be eight to go when we hit the stripe next time around. Dylan Poteet has a total of uh, two victories in Snickers Cup Series competition. Michael Norman has six. He was a two-time winner last season. And the interesting thing, too, was I actually talked with Michael Norman at the beginning of the season, and I asked him what the goal for this team was. And he came back with the reply of, we need to win early. That was the key word, early, because Michael Norman, to my knowledge, has not made a Snickers Cup Series chase ever since he's been in the Snickers Cup Series. He's been able to get to victory lane, but a lot of his wins end up coming after the chase has begun, which means that he's not able to utilize those wins he gets to get into a wild card spot or get into the chase for the championship. He said this season, with the fact that it's all about winning to get into the chase, he wants to get a win as early as possible, and he may be trying to do that here today at Auto Club, but if I were him, I'd look in my rearview mirror because the strongest car of the day, Dylan Poteet, is slowly reeling him in, and we're getting close for a good old Auto Club shootout here. Hopefully, we won't have a phantom caution ruining it. Very interesting there. Michael Norman took the low road, the low line there in three and four. Pokti using the middle groove, and that allowed Pokti to even close the gap up more. Now, that was interesting strategy on the part of Norman. I don't really know if I rightly agree with it, but we'll see. As Norman continues to try and run the guts out of that Wrangler Chevrolet SS. Right behind him, Dylan Pokteet. The big story coming into this season was it was Michael Norman Motorsports versus Tweenix Racing. Eminem with five drivers and Tweenix Racing with four. 
It was the question of which Chevy team was going to emerge victorious first. So far, neither one of the teams have gone to victory lane, but both, both teams have a driver up here with a chance to win it. Five to go. Less than five to go, actually, as Norman still leads. He now moves a little groove lower than Poteet again. Every half groove higher that Poteet runs is a little bit more momentum he gets off of turn two and turn four. And he is closing. Oh, talk about closing. He's right on the back door. Here he comes. Can Dylan Pote do anything with Michael Norman? We've seen the cliche today that you have to make the passes on the high side. Can Pote find an area on the high side to make the pass? Or for the first time today, can Dylan Pote finally get something happening on the inside line? We've only seen two drivers basically be able to make a move on the inside line and make it stick. Those were Danny Wells and Kyle Corbett. Pote has not been able to do that, and he's got to if he's going to get around this three-car of Michael Norman for the win, and time is ticking away quickly. Again, Norman utilizing the lower line. Pote rim riding there on the outer portion of the gray area where the asphalt and tire wear has been laid down. And there's three left to go on the ticker. Pote falling back a little. Could be strategy. Maybe waiting for an opportunity to mount a charge. And now this time the rolls, the rolls reverse. Norman went a half groove higher, Poteet a half groove lower, and it looked like the gap remained about the same between the 3 and the 31. And the caution's out! Whatever kind of a battle we were going to have for this win is not going to be happening. Yellow flag is waving here. Michael Norman's going to win this race under caution. Eminem goes to victory lane for the first time this season, and Michael Norman wins early in the season at Auto Club Speedway, his seventh win of his NSRA career. Whether Pote could have mounted a charge and made a move, we will never know. For the second straight day, we end the race under caution when it was looking like it was going to shape up to be a good Auto Club finish. And look who snuck himself up into the top three. James McLeod came from nowhere. He's going to get third place with Fitzwater and Michaels behind him in fourth and fifth. But did was this a phantom caution? No, it wasn't. Jacob Lawler was involved in whatever this was, and possibly Ralph Mason as well. The defending Snickers Cup Series champion, Jacob Lawler, who comes in 19th in points, caught up in something here. Tough break for that driver. And the Farmers Insurance Chevy Camaro, but that's what brought out the caution. White flag is about to be displayed for Michael Norman. Let's quickly look back at a replay and then come back for the checkers. Well, not only a tough break for Lawler, but a tough break for a number of other drivers who we were talking about making their way up here via pit strategy, namely Kyle Corbett and Jessica Shelton. Right there, Lawler gets really tight or something, slides up the track. Shelton hooks him in the right rear. Kyle Corbett is collected, and that is a tough, tough break for all three of those drivers. We're up inside the top 15 at the time. Lawler up onto the back rear deck lid of the State Water Heaters Toyota. And then the car going to slide there as he had gone up and onto his roof. Everybody else does a good job getting down to the inside line to avoid. They actually were a long ways back there too. A lot of stragglers there. But that is what happened to Jacob Lawler. And that was an incident just inside the top 15. A number of, of drivers who were looking for really good runs here tonight. Lawler, or today I should say, Lawler, Shelton, and Corbett doesn't look like they're going to get him. And they basically get screwed out of good finishes here late in the Auto Club 400. Well, Michael Norman can check something off his list here this season, and that is get to victory lane early, as he is going to win here at Auto Club, and this victory is going to tie him with John Cittadino for second on the all-time wins list in Snickers Cup Series all-time wins. Only one win now behind the all-time wins list leader, Jake Cole, as he'll come down here. Michael Norman in the number three team is going to go to victory lane for the first time here in Season 8. Winning the Auto Club 400, checkered flag in hand, and it'll wave over the hood of the Wrangler Chevrolet of Michael Norman. He takes the checkers here today at Auto Club Speedway. Dylan Pote going to finish out in second. His Twenix Racing teammate in third. Zachary Fitzwater will be the highest finishing rookie today in fourth. And Joshua Michaels, who came from way at the rear of the field, is going to be the highest finishing BMW. Fifth place run for his machine.
Man. Tough weekend here at, at Auto Club, though. Second straight time. We had a possible battle for the win coming up. And the caution flag rears its ugly head at the very end of the event. Happened in the Mobile One Cup Series race yesterday when a battle between Wolfgang Mason and Jessica Shelton was shaping up. And here today when Michael Norman and Dylan Poti looked like they were going to put on one great show at the finish. But the caution flag ends both chances of us having a really exciting finish here at Auto Club Speedway. But a result is a result and Michael Norman is going to become the fifth different race winner here this season. Joining Trent Dunham, Sean Galgan, Levi McIntyre, and Makoto Iguchi who are all hoping that their wins are going to be good enough to get them into the chase for the championship. The only driver right now that basically can practically be confirmed in this season's chase is Trent Dunham with his two wins this season. But this is one big step for Michael Norman and a chance of making one of those 16 spots in this season's Snickers Cup Series chase for the championship. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and become part of the crew today. Here comes your official full finishing results, overall point stands, and rookie points heading into next week's event where only Snickers Cup Series action will take place. That's right, it's going to be just the Snickers Cup Series cars next weekend as they will head to Sonoma, California for the Infineon race weekend. So hope you will tune in for that and then we'll have the rest of the series back for you the following week. I believe the following week we are going to somewhere. Yeah, I can't seem to remember where exactly we're going. I want to say Charlotte, but I don't think that's right. Might be going to Talladega, actually. Well, whatever the case is, you could actually uh, look at the official schedule on the NSRA Online Series homepage. The whole schedule is there anyway for you to be able to view. So, anyway, we will see you guys next time. We'll see you at Auto Club. we make that Infineon for our next race. You've been watching Best of the Race, Offline Racing at its best. Continues to flip. Now comes the rest. There